Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. And now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Welcome to this edition of Midweek Geek here on Geek Therapy Radio. Sorry, I got to put my glasses on to be a, a true geek, don't I? That's not true. We're all geeks about something, no matter what you look like, and geeks are sexy now, so it doesn't matter anyways. Uh, but welcome in, Midweek Geek here on Geek Therapy Radio. Make sure you're subscribed if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, make, if you're listening on a podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button there on your favorite podcast player. Of course, I prefer the iHeartRadio app, but whatever you're using, uh, Pocket Cast, Google Podcast, Spreaker, whatever device you're using, whatever service you're using to listen to this podcast, make sure you're subscribed to the Geek Therapy Radio podcast with Johnny Hamburger. That is yours truly. Uh, housekeeping aside... I, it's a fascinating subject this week that I wanted to talk about on Midweek Geek, and it's something that we've all heard of, we've all heard of this, it's been very popular for the past, I'd say several years now, actually, but I never really looked into it. I think it's one of those things that for a lot of us listening or watching this right now, we knew what it was without knowing that it was actually called something, Uh, and that is A.S. MR. ASMR, if you're unaware, stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. So now you know that the acronym isn't just slang for something, it's just a real acronym for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. But what is it? And why is it so popular? Uh, Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response is something... People usually describe it as a, a feeling, and I'll take the, the definition here, a feeling of well-being combined with a tingling sensation in the scalp and down the back of the neck, as experienced by some people in response to a specific gentle stimulus, often a particular sound. So, for a lot of people, and not everybody, uh, as it happens that not Everybody responds to this the same way. Not everyone is is triggered to feel that sensation. Uh, so for those people, it's hard to describe the sensation if you haven't experienced it firsthand. Like there's so many things. How can you explain childbirth to to a male? You can't. I, I, as try as you might, I can't. I don't know what childbirth feels like. Just like getting kicked in the testicles, it's probably pretty hard for a female to. 100%, 100% understand. Yes, getting kicked in sensitive areas does hurt, but it's what I'm saying is there's different sensations for, for the different genders. And if you haven't experienced ASMR, if you haven't experienced that tingling on your scalp and, and have something, some sensory stimulus uh, stimulate that response from you, it's hard to describe, especially telling somebody, hey, the sound of a woodpecker like makes me... Uh, it, it, it makes me feel this euphoric, like tingling in my scalp or something like that. If you don't experience that, it's hard to articulate what it feels like. Um, often they say it's a particular sound, but it can be anything. It can be a uh, smell. I know there's something sometimes for me, there's there's smell that uh, elicits that response an, an action that elicits that response. And, and I'll equate it like this. For a lot of people, it was sucking your thumb. That is something that that gave you that very peaceful feeling, maybe made you feel something in the back of your neck, a nice, relaxing, tingling feeling. Um, for me, I'd never suck my thumb, but I curl my tongue back in my mouth. If you can see that on YouTube, I, I, it's nothing fancy. It's just kind of when I'm feeling very content, like when I lay down on my pillow and it's the familiar smell of my own pillow. My tongue, I kind of suck my own tongue. Like it goes back in my mouth just a little bit, just behind the teeth. And I just kind of suck on it. And that puts me in this like euphoric, kind of peaceful state. Not euphoric. That's kind of ex- extreme way to describe it. Um, I know for some people, I have friends who the tick tock of a clock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And if I whisper that, that might be ASMR. If you felt something there for me, whispering, something repetitive like that, whispering is a big, is a trigger for people. And this is not a trigger, like a negative trigger, like I'm triggered. It's a, it's a, 
pleasurable trigger. Um, the sound of um, uh, your the the laundry, the dryer, just tumbling laundry, tumbling towels in a dryer. I know a lot of people, and, and I like it too, when the dryer's going, when I go to sleep. It's very soothing. It's very relaxing. Uh, the rain, if it's if it's continuous and gentle, uh, not when it's just blowing against the window, um, but it's continuous and gentle. Maybe the, the hum of traffic outside, that can trigger this, this ASMR response, this autonomous sensory meridian response. Uh, visual, visual things. It can be something like... Um, I don't know, maybe when you close your eyes kind of tight and you see the colors and the little shapes happening like on, in your eyes, like the eye fluid, um, your brain is just kind of firing off these, these, these sensory things to your eyes because your, your brain isn't receiving the visual information anymore, but it's firing something off in that kind of cortex of the brain um, to make those kind of colors and shapes happen when you close your eyes. That can be it. Uh, I've heard some people describe when they want to feel peaceful or relaxed, um, they think back to their mom folding laundry. Just the sound of taking the fabric out of the, the basket and kind of folding it and, and flopping it or whatever, that kind of, it, that visual, that vision uh, combined with the auditory response triggers their ASMR, uh, triggers that nice, pleasant, tingling feeling in the back of their neck and their scalp. Um, so that's basically what it is. I spent the last few minutes there kind of telling you what it is so that if you don't, that if you saw the word or heard the word ASMR, but never looked into it, turns out you, you always knew what it was before you, it was defined before I linked the two together. It's, it's been there your whole life. Um, but why has it gotten so popular as of, as of late, as a matter of fact, there's going to be a Super Bowl commercial. It's a beer commercial, which they're going to employ some ASMR methods. It's going to be a lady whispering on a microphone real soft, kind of rubbing the, the beer bottle around on the table, opening the beer bottle like real close to the microphone and have rustling sounds. It's going to employ ASMR big time in that commercial. It's interesting to me. <laughs> they're going to try to do this because how many people what Super Bowl party are you going to go to where people are quiet enough to fully experience ASMR? The, the TV's going to get quiet and you're going to hear your cousin or your buddy Barry just ripping ass and munching on chips and things going on in the kitchen. Like unless your ASMR is somebody farting and eating potato chips, which it could be chips chewing on chips. That could be somebody. I can't picture someone ripping complete noxious butt fumes triggering ASMR for people, something pleasurable for people, but who knows? So trying to do an ASMR uh, commercial during the Super Bowl is going to be fascinating. Um, so I'm, I'm just saying that it's gotten to this popular state where it, you go on YouTube, you can find s millions of ASMR videos, but now it's getting so popular in 2019 that it's going to be actually employed during the Super Bowl. Um, and I have this, this is my own kind of personal opinion here as to why I think ASMR has unintentionally become so popular. It's such a, a, a thing now. Um, kind of like, it all ties together, high definition TVs, you know, 4K, now we're going up to 8K, that's one thing, we've, we've been able to see things in, in much more detail, and that's a big part of ASMR is the detail, you know, there's ASMR of, uh, of like, girls brushing their hair, just brushing their hair, and brushing hairs, brushing someone's hair, like if I brush Sarah's hair, that's very relaxing, to her um, and the sound of it can be very relaxing so with television getting so detailed and, and visuals getting so high definition and detailed um, that's one part of it the other part of it that I don't think a lot of people thought about that this is my more my opinion here kind of correlating it all is that audio devices have become so ubiquitous and so so um, accessible by the masses that that our audio has gotten so much higher in definition. So case in point, 
headphones now, even like basic headphones. If you bought, you know, a, a good set of headphones for like a hundred dollars, they are so good now, so well tuned now, and they sound so detailed and intricate now that you can do something like ASMR. It's not just a cheap little ten dollar pair of cans that you bought from Walgreens. You know, even 10 years ago, headphones now are so detailed and can produce such detailed uh, audio that ASMR is now popular. People can hear the crinkling of paper in ways that they've never been. I'm going to rub my hands by the uh, microphone here. You can probably hear that if you're listening on headphones or, or good speakers. You can hear that very intricately. Um in microphones, now everyone has access to USB condenser microphones. Condenser microphones, the con microphone I'm using right now actually is in a condenser. It's in an industry standard um, Electro Voice RE20. Um, but condenser microphones are very, can pick up what we call them, It's they're very dynamic. They pick up lots of uh, like the sound of crinkling paper. There's lots of air to a condenser microphone. They're extremely, extremely sensitive to transients. That's the word I was looking for, transients. Like the S in my voice, the, the way that every little piece of spit moves past uh, my tongue and teeth when I say S. In a good microphone, it sounds like the person is right next to you. And since they're wearing such good headphones now, it almost sounds like the person is right next to you. And a lot of this has been driven by the gaming community. I know that kind of sounds like it's out of left field a little bit, but once online gaming really, really, really started to take off, and, and specifically streaming, so Twitch and streaming your online gameplay, uh, people began to expect high quality audio and high quality video. So as a byproduct, the audio and video for the just the mass consumer got so much better because gamers now uh, required it. Even if you're just playing a game, hearing footsteps behind you 100 yards back, like in PUBG or something like that, you need good headphones to hear that. Um, for making YouTube videos and other such things, you need really good microphones uh, to hear that now people people can tell if you watch a YouTube channel that's 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 bad one of the reasons why it's bad is because the audio sucks because the person doesn't know what they're doing with the audio yet they're not experienced with with setting up the audio properly yet so now we become so used to even Joe Schmo putting out just the highest quality audio and video content so our devices microphones and headphones and speakers have gotten so detailed and that is one reason why in my opinion, ASMR has has taken off so much. I'm the only person I've heard so far make that correlation, but I don't think it's far fetched to uh, for for a lot of people to agree with. Maybe someone else has has mentioned that before. Maybe you've heard that elsewhere, but it's not that far fetched. Technology has just gotten so better, so much high definition, both in our visuals and our audio, that ASMR as a byproduct just kind of took off uh, from there. Um. Another interesting thing, and I'll wrap it up kind of with this. Another reason why ASMR is becoming so popular is it's psychological. Uh, physiological and psychological. And what I mean by that is we are becoming increasingly solitary and confined. So I'm thinking of the person there who, who rarely leaves home watches bunches of YouTube videos, plays lots of video games, and rarely, increasingly now, we, we don't have to leave the house. You can have your toilet paper delivered right to your doorstep within like 24 hours or less. You can order from the grocery store and just have it delivered to you. Uh, food, Uber Eats, you don't have to go to McDonald's anymore. Someone will pick up the McDonald's and bring it to you. You never have to leave the house. So here we are as a society, increasingly isolated and solitary, with very high definition headphones on most of the time, watching a very high definition TV screen and computer monitor. So we are kind of vicariously now through ASMR experiencing the outside world or, or experiencing outside stimuli without having to go outside. It's straight up like wall E type stuff. Um, 
so we're kind of ASMR allows us to live kind of vicariously without getting up out of our chair to hear like grass blades rustling in the wind uh, and to even see it on our screen in such high definition. Um, but you close your eyes and you're listening to these sounds. You can imagine yourself there. So as we get as increasingly isolated and solitary, and we have all this high definition stimuli around us. That's how I think ASMR really, really, really took off. It was always a thing. It's been a thing since humans have ever existed. The caveman in his cave listening to the crackling fire at the entrance of the cave, that crackling fire really soothed him. But for another thing, the fire uh, was used to ward off predators. So the crackling sound and the visual of the fire flickering and everything and the sound of the, fl- of the fire, it was safety. It was warmth and safety. And I would argue that maybe the first ASMR ever was just the sound and sight of a fire crackling. The fire keeping predators at bay, making you safe. Uh, and you equate that sound with safety and the warmth the fire gives off. It was probably one of the first ASMRs. Um, so I think I'm going to kind of wrap it up there. I'm really interested to know what you think. And if you're watching this or listening to this on a medium such as YouTube, uh, the Geek Therapy Radio YouTube channel, comment below with your thoughts on ASMR. Uh, do you experience it? Is there, what are, what, what triggers your ASMR? What triggers you to get that, those goosebumps on the back of your neck or in your scalp? And what, what is your, your, your positive trigger in that regard? Um, what really soothes you? Tick tock of a clock, dryer running, um, rustling leaves outside. Who knows? Maybe it's a childhood memory. Maybe it's a smell. It's the smell of your, your blanket when you were a kid. A lot of people like having their blankets with them all the time. Um, but what is that for you? Comment below if you're uh, watching on YouTube. Go to my Facebook page, Geek Therapy Radio on Facebook, and let me know there as well if you're just listening to the podcast. Um, but I think that's it. I don't know how long this was. How long? About 17 minutes. Uh, I, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, thank you for listening to this Midweek Geek. I have been Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator. Make sure you listen to Geek Therapy Radio at its new time, 10 p.m. Saturday nights here in Houston on KPRC 950 AM. As usual, you can always catch the podcast anytime. Podcast drops Fridays. Uh, the show of it airs Saturdays at 10 p.m. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel and all that good stuff and, and get at me. Let me know what your geek thing is. Let me know what ASMR uh simulate triggers you um and until next time take care be good to each other especially be good to yourself uh find your geek thing embrace your geek thing and i'll catch you next time here on geek therapy radio (laughs) 